Hi Obscuras, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I have a book haul for you all. So I have eight books to talk about today, three of which you know probably about if you've watched some of my recent videos and five I think which are more obscure slash you have never seen them before. I haven't hauled them yet. Um, as you guys know, Melbourne is in stage four lockdown right now and the mail that I have ordered has is weeks and weeks late, so I keep waiting for more books to come, but at this rate, I'm gonna have read them all before I haul them, which is like, defeats the purpose of the haul. So I might as well film them now before I read through them and spoil the surprise. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you want to read any of these, please let me know down below. Also, before we get into it, I just have to say, today I was in a very blue mood. I just did my nails, like my favorite color blue. I did blue eyeshadow, and this is my mom's t-shirt from when she was my age, from Bush Gardens. I don't know where that is, but we went there when I was little, and I just, I begged her to have this because I just, <laughs> I love it so much. It's also making me look really tan because this is bright white, so I look a little tan, hey? Like, pretty cool. Anyways, let's get into it. So the first one is Elizabeth by Ken Greenhall. So if you've seen my TBR for the Spooky Smart Bitch Readathon, you will have heard of this. If you were in the live show, you would have heard of this. Otherwise, maybe not so much. So this is about a young woman named Elizabeth who discovers a century old dark fae in her mirror. And the Fae bestows magical powers upon Elizabeth, and Elizabeth's first goal upon getting the powers is that she wants to slaughter her parents. So, it's short, it's not sweet, and I am reading it for the Spooky Smart Bitch Readathon for the Vintage Challenge. So I can't wait to get to it. This was a complete cover buy, because I mean, like, have you seen anything more gorgeous? I think not. Okay. The next book I picked up is a recommendation from Jordaline. This is The Murders of Molly Southbourne, where we're following a young woman again named Molly, who is kind of having a rough life because whenever she bleeds, when the blood hits the ground, it spawns a clone of herself, which tries to kill her. So not only does she try not to bleed, but she also is trying really hard to kill all of the clones which are coming after her. So again, it's short and I just really wanna to get to it. I am getting into it this month as well. I just, there's so many good books that we're getting to for Spooky Smart Bitch Readathon. So if you wanna join, it has started, but it's the whole month, so there's plenty of time. I will leave links for it down below. Okay, and the last one, which you are probably familiar with, is Toddler Hunting by Kono Taiko. This is a collection of short, dark, creepy stories from a female Japanese author who I've never read before. Um, and the title just caught my attention, and I really love uh, dark female Japanese writers. Actually, I like all dark Japanese writers, like let's be real here. <laughs> but um, I especially love reading new ones that I've never read before. So this was quite an obscure pick uh, because I had to order it and it was really hard to get my hands on this, but I'm really glad I did, even though it took months to get here. But anyway, I'm not, I promise, I'm not gonna whine about the shipping because there's so much more devastating things happening to everyone else other than my book mail is slow. Okay, so yes, I know that I'm being a baby. Uh, next up, you will have seen only if you watched through my Reading Rush vlog, and this is Hum by Jamal May, who is a black poet from America. And this is a collection of stories which focuses on man and machine, and it's kind of steampunky. And I was like, absolutely, please give this to me. So I have three poetry collections, which I have. So I'm planning to do maybe a poetry mini burst sometime down the line, but I just am too excited about mini bursts. So I have a whole bunch planned and the ones that are sooner are, are tackling my like reading biases that I kind of shout on myself for in my uh, mid-year stats video, I'll leave it down below. But one of the things is like non-binary voices, indigenous voices, uh, non-US UK publishing houses. So I have a lot of things that I need to focus on before I get to poetry, but um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I might pick it up like 
instead of sometime during the mini burst, I might just pick it up whenever I want because it's so freaking cool, am I right? Like, look at that. Okay, next up is one that I have heard almost no one talk about. I have heard Jen Campbell talk about it. I already purchased this before I heard her talk about it. So this is the Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rafi. So I found this out when I was looking up um, Caribbean literature. So this is set in Trinidad and it's about um, a fisherman who goes out and he's pulling in the line and he pulls something up from the depths, which happens to be a mermaid. And it says it's a love story. So, I mean, I've never read anything set in Trinidad or from a person from Trinidad. And I love mermaid stories. So I knew, knew, knew that I had to get it. And I just think it's really interesting. The cover is so cool looking. Um, and I just really can't wait to get to this. So, uh, yeah, it says Monique Raffae is a Trinidadian born British writer. So, can't wait. So this next one is again one that's pretty obscure. I don't think maybe anyone knows about it, but I really want to get to it. So if you don't know, I really love Bryn Greenwood's writing styles. Both of her books have been five stars for me. So we have um, All the Ugly and Wonderful Things and then The Reckless Oath We Made, which The Reckless Oath We Made is in my top 10 books of all time. It's staring at me right now from my bookshelves. Like I just love that so much. So I decided I was going to pick up one of the books from Bryn Greenwood's backlist. This is Last Will by Bryn Greenwood and it says Bernie Rally fails at everything he touches. The victim of a kidnapping for ransom as a child, Bernie has spent his adult life trying to avoid being noticed. That's impossible once he inherits his grandfather's enormous fortune. The inheritance comes complete with a lot of obligations. A mansion, a problematic housekeeper named Maida Amos, Beauty queen, alien abductee, crypto Jew, single mother, Maida is all those things, and she may also be the only person who can help Bernie survive his new and very public life. Would never pick this up based on the description if it wasn't Bryn Greenwood, but Bryn Greenwood's like shining thing that she does so well, I would argue almost better than anyone else that I've ever read, is character development and making you fall in love with them. All her characters have flaws, but they are just so human and she makes them seem so lovable despite their flaws that like, I am so excited to have this and uh, I really, really want to read it, but I want to save it for a time when I can savor it. So not right now because a lot's going on, but maybe in a month when I'm just reading freely and I don't have any TBR planned um, because again, Bryn Greenwood, I would argue is tied with Herman Hess for my favorite author. Uh, so I'm highly anticipating this. The next two books, uh, I was so sure I was gonna love them that I actually bought them in hardback, which I never do. So I hope that I'm not wrong about them. This is The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Juananda Petrus. Please, if you've read this, let me know your thoughts down below because if this is not one of the most stunning covers you've ever seen, you are a liar. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're just lying. It's so gorgeous. And I know that I said I never read anything from Trinidad, but this one, oddly enough, is also about someone from Trinidad. So this is dealing with a young woman whose parents catch her with a girl, her girlfriend, and they decide her to send her to America. And when she gets to America, I think she builds a friendship with someone and it might turn into love. I know that this is a female-female romance, but it is also so much more than that. I think it's dealing with life in a new culture and also queer aspects that are accepted by some parts of family and not other parts. Um, I'm not sure more than that because I didn't really want to spoil stuff because the synopsis is huge. And whenever I see a huge synopsis, I'm like, don't tell me everything. Like, please don't. Leave something to the imagination, okay? Like, leave some things hidden so I can discover it for myself. But I just can't wait to get to this. I think that it's stunning. And I have a mini burst coming. I'm just waiting for one more book in the mail. And then it's going to be the most blow your mind mini burst of all time. Because I have this one, I have another one, and I have one I'm waiting for. And you guys are going to be salivating over these three books. I promise you. Okay. And now we are to the last book of the haul. This is How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. 
I ordered this months and months ago. It was out of print. I think they had to reprint it. This is one that is on my nightstand because I read nonfiction before bed because oftentimes nonfiction has short chapters, so it's great for picking up before bed, and it also doesn't kind of stimulate my mind like an adventure would, where it would keep me up and prompt my insomnia. So um, in this one, he's breaking down that just being silent and not racist isn't enough. These days you have to be actively anti-racist, and I have really, really wanted to read this, and I'm so glad I have it. And it will be the one that I pick up when I finish my current nonfiction read. And yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And if you've read it, I would love to know your thoughts down below. Okay guys, that finishes up my haul today. If you're gonna read any of them or want to read them, have read them, sound off down below. Let me know your thoughts. If you've made it this far, please leave a tiger emoji down below in honor of my mom's awesome t-shirt. Um, and I will see you guys in another video very, very soon. Um, yeah, love you all. See you all later. Bye, little obscuras.